Hey, I'm Steve, the MG EV guy. Riding around today in my converted 1972 midget, which I'll tell you about more in this series. I'm not the first guy to convert an MG to electric, but I'm hoping to run a little series here to talk about living with a converted MG. It took me a couple years to get this conversion done. I worked with Can EV here in Canada to source the parts. I even got a little bit of help from Michael Breen from EV West on designing the build. The guy who helped me with the project is a fellow named Pete Cassiato who has a company called the Electric Bus Company. I'll put a link somewhere to that. Now that the project is finished and I'm just living with this car, couldn't be happier. It's incredibly fun to drive. It's got tons of pep. It's a great conversation starter. And it's just the best project. I also have a 1958 MGA. And the truth is I never drive it anymore. I really found a number of reasons to prefer driving electric in a classic. And I'm gonna run through a bunch of those uh, in this series. I hope you'll tag along. Please hit the subscribe button. And uh, over the summer, I'm gonna be posting a number of, of episodes. Um, and I'm sure I'll raise a lot of comments, positive and negative. Anyway, this first episode is just a little bit about, about the build. And uh, here it comes. So let me tell you the story about this car now christened Lola. Uh, Lola started out life as an internal combustion engine in 1972. And if you look at these side-by-side -side specs, you'll see that there are a lot of similarities in the EV version uh, versus the original version. But the one thing that stands out to me and is perhaps most important is the difference in the torque. We've basically doubled the torque and that torque is available right at zero RPM. It really makes the car a bucket of fun to drive, uh, very enjoyable. Obviously, I can't quite get quite as far on a full charge at 90 miles now as I could on a full tank of gas at 210 miles, but I'm saving a considerable amount of money in doing that. Cost to go 30 miles has gone down from a, over $5 to about under 50 cents. Um, let me tell you about some of the components in this car. The AC50 is a great motor. It's about half the size and weight of the um, 1275 engine that I took out. And you can see, uh, looking at its torque curve, that it really delivers all of its torque uh, in, in a very linear fashion, all the way up to about 4,000 RPM, making this car uh, tons of fun to drive. A few other things that are worth noting, this converts uh, the DC battery power to AC power for the motor and we run an AC motor because it allows for regen and regenerative braking is totally one of the best parts of having an EV uh, and it also gives me a few more uh, miles of travel. We're running the Orion 2 BMS which has proven to be an excellent piece of equipment even though I'm struggling to understand all of the faults that I'm still running into. These are not catastrophic faults but little things that the uh, BMS is telling me could be uh, improved on. But, you know, I'm fairly new at this and I'm learning as I go. We're using lithium ion phosphate batteries. I've got 34 of these cells from Sinopoly. They are running series and we're running at around 110 volts. And of course the batteries are where most of the weight comes. So even though we removed a full tank of gas weighing about 70 pounds, we've added almost 435 pounds most of which are sitting over the rear axle, which actually helps the car with traction and uh, performance. A few other things that are worth noting, we have a DC to DC converter, which allows me to run my 12 volt, a CAN bus, which allows me to communicate with all the different equipment, and a uh, J1772 charger, uh, which allows me to run level one and level two um, charging systems. The, the car will charge at around 30 amps with a level two charger, which is great. I'll get a full charge in just under six hours from totally empty. One of the big changes in the car was its weight distribution. Uh, the midget was known for being front heavy and that has changed definitely. We've taken 35 pounds 
out of the front of the car and added 260 pounds into the rear of the car. Most of that weight is right over the rear axle, which is great. And so far the car has performed fantastically despite the fact that it's a little heavy in the back end. I did have to add an additional leaf spring to keep the car level essentially and uh, provide the rear suspension required. If we look at the real performance of this vehicle, we're using the uh, transmission that's in the car, so I get reversed from that transmission. Normal driving is typically in third gear, but we can use the clutch to shift through gears as required. Certainly keeping it in third allows for a great driving experience in 90% of driving conditions. It has a continuous rating for 5,000 RPM, which will achieve 120 kilometers an hour in third gear and cruise very comfortably at 80 kilometers an hour at 2,500 RPM in fourth, with lots of room for immediate acceleration. Makes the car very, very enjoyable to drive at highway speeds. Regenerative braking means that very little brake is used, typically only to slow from five kilometers per hour to stop. So I expect I'm not gonna have to touch the brakes on this car for a decade or so. The car is a 1972 MG Midget, which I bought off the first owner three years ago. I bought the car because it was small and lightweight, but also had enough room to hold the 34 cells of batteries I was planning to use. There are four areas for batteries in this car. The main bank is right here, right over the rear axle. We ended up making a small modification and cutting uh, the hump that was above the wheel well and welding in a flat panel so we could get all the batteries to fit in here. We also have a set here in the trunk, which is actually pretty well hidden, but they're down here along with the BMS. Under the bonnet, I have two other battery arrays. I have four cells sitting right here where the old uh, 12 volt went, and I have four cells mounted where the radiator once was. The J1772 went where the old gas filler was. Eventually I'm gonna have to put a gasket in because it's not a perfect fit. We bolted the motor directly to the uh, transmission and I do use the gears frequently. Uh, to get a good high speed run, you do have to switch through second, third and fourth to really get the most power out of, of this arrangement. This is where all the business takes place in this vehicle. If you look down below, you'll see the AC50, uh, and that is mounted directly to the original transmission through a mounting plate. We also have uh, our motor controller here, and our charger here, and our DC to DC right here. And then all the key fuses and switches just sit at the back. It's a very elegant and simple uh, arrangement, and it performs extremely well. Uh, I've already put about 1,500 miles on the car this season. The dash array is stock with a couple of exceptions. On the far left, I have the um, Expert Pro, which gives me a, a number of different outputs uh, based on what I'm looking for, including amps in and out, state of charge, and volts. I also have uh, this little guy here, which allows me to, to uh, communicate with the BMS and adjust things like my um, regenerative braking and total amount of power available to me. The uh, fuel gauge, which is always on zero, will hopefully one day show me my state of charge. That's it for this episode, the introductory episode of MG EV Guy. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them along and I'll try to address them in further episodes. Starting in the next episode, we'll be doing the 10 reasons why driving a converted EV is better. Episode one, the cold start. Until then, hope your battery's full and the roads are empty. Cheers.